Hey, hi, hello, welcome back to Project Isolation. You're right in time for the game's second devlog. This has definitely been an interesting and productive month. Let's get right into it. If you remember at the end of the last devlog, I was showing off this sliding system I'd built, allowing you to get into cover a lot faster and just overall making movement a lot more fun. My first goal for this month was to expand upon that and bring a more varied moveset to the project, inspired by games like Titanfall 2 and Mirror's Edge. I first set out to implement a mantle in order to allow for a slightly more vertical level design, though I guess I'm also just a fan of how it feels in games. This was pretty straightforward, to be honest. Much like the slide system, it's heavily based on the implementation in the FPS animation blueprint asset. I just kind of rewrote it in C++. What's not based on that asset is the vaulting system I decided to throw in on a whim. I figured if I have the starting logic for it implemented already, I may as well go for it. However, one of the conditions I had was that it had to not interfere with the mantling system. You had to be able to perform both at once. My solution was this set of line traces. Line traces are quite cheap, so I was comfortable spawning a bunch of them in a single frame. These line traces start from just above the point we hit the wall in front of us, and look for noticeable differences in the terrain in order to determine whether we've crossed the vaultable surface. If we have, we do one last check to make sure the player will fit there, and then we interpolate the player's position to the new one we found. I wanted to do just one more thing, this time inspired by my short stint with Apex Legends, an infinite slide given that the angle that the player is sliding at is steep enough. Grabbing the surface normal and doing a teeny bit of math was enough to get this to work, and now we can just reset the sliding timer every time the player is detected to still be on a surface of sufficient steepness. The next big thing I wanted to work on was a world interaction system, something flexible enough to be expandable in the future and to work modularly with as few base classes as possible. This started with ammunition pickups. In Project Isolation, ammunition is broken down into four categories. Pistol, Rifle, Shotgun, and Special, which comprises ammo for snipers and other such special weapons. I hopped into Blender to make a few models for these, ending up with three various capacities. A small, medium, and large, which award different amounts of bullets each. Every ammunition type, except the special ammunition, gets these. After that, I hopped into Unreal and started writing the implementation of these into the engine which starts with a C++ interface, which allows us to call functions across classes. We apply this to a line trace which we shoot out of the player's camera when the player presses the F key. The ammo pickup class calls back to our player controller, which holds all our ammunition values into it, and simply updates these once a pickup has been, well, picked up. As you can see now, you can pick up the ammo, and the ammo box disappears. Now, last time I checked, boxes don't just disappear when you take something out of them. So I also modeled some empty boxes, and now, if you pick up an ammo box, the ammo within it disappears, but the box remains, as God intended. Having built the interaction system already, I figured it was a good time to expand upon it and build default interactable classes for the future level design process. This consists of two little classes, an interactable class and then an interacted class. These again communicate by an interface. The class that we communicate with is very flexible, and set independently for each Blueprint instance. I also made sure that the functionality of these is implementable in Blueprints, since nobody wants to be compiling a new C++ class for every new interactable item. To test the system, I built this little button, and then these little doors that will appear or disappear based on whether the button is pressed down or not. As you can see, it works great. My last goal for the month was this kayak idea I had. I wanted to add a second dimension to movement, letting the player move across bodies of water too, which I plan to use in the game's level design. I wanted to use my own solution to movement here, rather than relying on Unreal's built-in water physics system. It's almost certainly cheaper, and gives me a lot more flexibility to tailor it to my own needs. Building a momentum system from scratch was not easy though. function which generates movement coordinates for every tick. This is running on a custom timer, since using Unreal's event tick function, which is called every frame, would just be dumb. Ahem, <clears throat> Bethesda. With that set up, the basic movement of the kayak is in place. It's still super rough at the moment, and definitely needs to be tweaked. I'll probably come back to this once I have a character rig, since I think it would really benefit from some animations. 
That's it for this month, it was a super productive month and I'm really happy with the game's progress. Next month is going to be all about guns, guns, and more guns. I'd really love to implement some more advanced weapon systems that I can then use with AI and expand as more weapons come into the game. I can't wait to show all of that to you when it's done, but until then, take care and happy developing. Bye-bye.